Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Big Dunge Show. Today, I'm joined by professional boxer Brian Hall, who just turned professional this year and had four fights already. Thank you, Brian, for joining me today. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm definitely, uh, you know, glad to have you here. I came across your Instagram, um, I think, a couple of weeks ago, and I just saw they were getting started. Um, what I do on YouTube is just really like to get up and coming boxers, get their names out there. I think it's pretty cool um so that's why i was happy to have you on i reached out to you um so first of all just give me an opportunity give me a you know what i say is tell me a little bit about yourself i just say tell you know the viewers about yourself you know what how old are you you know when did you start why did you start and where do you fight out of well how old am i i'm uh 26 years old uh i started uh 2000 and like in the middle of 2019 but you know during the year 2020 was going to happen. That's when COVID happened. That's when I was going to start my um, amateur career. Uh, the reason why I started is because 2019, I was going through a lot. Uh, I lost my uncle. And then after I lost my uncle, uh, somebody, he's my big brother, was talking. I was telling him about boxing because one somebody I used to work with, uh, he told me that he just put his son in boxing. And he was telling me about it. Man, I used to play football, but I kept injuring my ankle. But the love of the competition just never left. And talking to him, and he was like, shoot, if I was your size, I'd do boxing. And then it's crazy because a couple of weeks later, my brother died, and that's when I jumped in the boxing ring. And ever since then, like, you know, I've been in. If I feel like I'm a football too, I'm the same way. I was a football player. I played football my whole life. My dream was to play college football. Um, I got injured. I got into boxing. I feel like with America, with heavyweights too in America, I feel like a lot of people could take advantage of that situation. You know what I mean? Of yeah. football and the boxing. So tell me a little bit about you know just your transition from boxing. I'm sorry, from football to boxing. Oh, the transition, man. It's a big difference with the cardio, mm. for real. Shoot. Absolutely, people. A, yeah. Yeah, like with you know football, man. You guys, it's a team sport. Boxing, it's just you and your opponent. Yeah, you can't really blame nobody but yourself, and that's what I love about it because like it helps you face reality too. You know, like you can't blame other people. You gotta look at yourself at the end of the day. How was how was sparring like for you? You know, I remember when I first started, like hitting the bags and all that was easy. Yeah, that all right, I could go easy. Hop in the ring, first time sparring. I guess that quick was that a similar situation to you. Oh, most definitely. It's crazy, too, because uh, I was on Facebook the other day and a memory popped up when I first started sparring and I was watching it. I was like, wow, I was like this when I started sparring. I said, that is crazy compared to what I'm doing now. So, yeah, it's a big difference, though. But yeah. And then, like I said, the condition, the conditioning was a big difference, too. Yeah, definitely. It definitely humbles you. You definitely can say big, that. Big humble, big humble. So that's, you know starting your journey in professional boxing, but also what was it like to just turn professional boxing um, later in a career than average, right? A lot of people, they start boxing when they're young, you know, when they're, when they're in their early teens, they turn pro around 18, 19, you know, you turn professional pretty later than average. So what has that been like? And have you really noticed anything when you're in the ring? Uh, It's been, it's, it's a big difference because when I, this is my second year competition fighting, Last year was my first year being an amateur, and then nobody wasn't really trying to fight me around me. So we hopped in the pros, and shoot, it's been a big transition because people, everybody's strong, you know, and you ain't got no headgear, and it's more of a thinking game. And then, too, like, uh, the more the more competition, since, I, since I'm still new at this, I still ain't reached my peak yet. So the more I'm going at it with, like, you know, I'll be sparring with Richard Torres here at Olympian, and it's like the more we go at it, it's like Goku. The more, you know, we go at it, I'm just getting stronger and stronger, you know? So, right. like, I love it because it's making me adapt faster. So what also have you been noticing just from the training? You know, if professional boxing, this is a real deal now. How has it been, like, training um, your your everyday schedule? You know, what do you do also outside of boxing? Do you have a part-time job, a full-time job, or you dedicate 100% to boxing? Just what's the lifestyle like? Oh, uh, man, it's a, it's a grind because my lifestyle is very different. I got a daughter. I'm a, I'm a dad, and what's, I'm a single dad at that, and – um, I work a full time job and the job I got, like, you know, it ain't easy, but it's just a mindset because I'm trying to get out the struggle, you know, and, you know, just 
can't stop because one day it's going to happen and all that hard work going to pay off. So how, how do you balance that training in between your job? Are you going in the mornings? Are you trying to do something on your lunch break or, you know, what's that like? Uh, I run, but uh, cause I work at uh six in the morning, so I run. I try to run at uh four thirty, get that running out the way. And then when I get out of work at two thirty, I pick up my daughter from school. I chill with her. Then I go to the boxing gym from six to eight. And is that is that the same inside of camp and outside of camp, or you know what's 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 like in camp? Oh, in camp, man. Should we run it every day? Uh. We running, we running two times more on the weekends. We instead of doing three or four miles during the weekday the weekends, we run six miles every day on the on Sunday and Saturday. And shoot, sparring is is crazy when we spar. So I'm curious, uh, you know what? Well, actually, since you mentioned you uh you box with you train with Richard Torres, he actually has a fight this upcoming Saturday. I'm sure you're well aware. You know what's that like sparring with him? Um, you know, in the camp, obviously he's a Olympian. He's going to be a really well decorated heavyweight. You know, what's that experience been like? Uh, man, it's been a crazy experience because Richard, he's a good person outside the ring, but when we inside the ring, it's a whole different Richard. You know, it's a demon time, and he's proved like he shows me a lot about the game, and that's what I like about him because he's a humble person. But uh, the tempo's faster, and yeah, you just got to keep up. So I'm not sure where you live, but where I live, it's harder to find. I know there's not a lot of heavyweight boxers. So what is it like finding sparring partners for you? You know, who are you really just getting the same amount of people every time? Or do you have to look outside your area to get heavyweight you know, sparring partners? Or is it pretty easy for you to find? Uh, Sometimes it's hard because a lot of people outside. I live in Fresno, California. And a lot of people, like, there's some heavyweights that's probably, like, an hour away from me, 45 minutes, and they can't get to me. So, usually, I'm probably sparring the same heavyweights. But lately, since for this fight that I got coming up on February 15th, uh, we're going to try something new and, you know, get more people that's out there to try to come out here to me, or are we going to go out there to them? So just describe a little bit more about the experiences they have now as a professional boxer. Obviously, a lot bigger now than amateur boxing. What is it like performing on a bigger stage in front of fans, having people come support you and all? What's that experience really like? Having a whole team around you and actually getting paid to to you know do a sport. That's a whole different experience because you uh, people you know people gonna talk about your dreams. You know, especially if your name is not on the big the big boards. But at the same time, it's still the same thing. You're going to work your way up. But the different experience, shoot, the promoters, they take care of you. They give you, you know, money to eat for the fights. And you, you get a hotel. And then what? There's a lot of – it's like you're a superstar in people's eyes because everybody can't get in the ring like what you, what you could do, you know? And, you know, describe a little bit about the matchmaking for a new professional boxer like yourself, especially like a heavyweight. Is that usually a promoter's job or are you are you trying to do what you could? Your coach is trying to do what you could. How is that like fighting fighters, especially you're younger, you're starting out in boxing. You want to get as many fights as you could. Right. So how is that matchmaking like? Uh, yeah, it's the promoters and I believe the coaches, too, like, you know, because the coaches, especially me, I'm a free agent. I'm not signing nobody. So my coach got to help me. uh look for me a fight and then once he get in contact with a matchmaker or a promoter then you know they can if they can see if they can match me up with anybody okay yeah so i never really knew i didn't i didn't know like free agents right i thought like boxing usually you know usually have a promoter i mean if not usually contact with one but that's pretty cool mm -hmm. that you said you're a free agent i'm assuming one day you're gonna obviously hope to have a promoter obviously that's every well, yeah. boxing dreams but i just never knew yeah. that was a, a thing mm -hmm. so uh also being heavyweight, I never interviewed a heavyweight before. That's why I have a lot of different questions. Uh, just I got you. You don't have to worry much about cutting weight. You don't have to worry about cutting weight really at all. You still have to eat healthy, still have to be on shape. But what is just like your nutrition and diet like, especially during camp? Like, what you mean nutrition and diet? Like, oh, oh so, this, yeah, this like, my what nutrition you, what plan period? Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, my plan, man, uh, I like to eat greens. You could call me like a vegetarian type stuff. And greens and white meat, I don't like, I don't eat beef because I feel like it makes me feel like, you know, bloated and I eat less carbs. Only time I really eat carbs is like when I know I'm going to spar that day or if it's going to be a tense day. So, you know, I can get that energy, but mostly just chicken and salad so I could 
Cause yeah, we're heavyweights, but you don't want to look you don't want to look like that when you take off your shirt and all stuff. And then plus, like you got to keep that in. You got to keep that uh, nutrition in because we don't know what's going on in the inside of our body. Mm -hmm. We only know what goes on in the out. Right, and you know, describe a little bit before what it's like just a week of and a day before the fight, you know, what's, what's going through your mind? How do you deal with emotions? What's the process like too? you know, weigh-ins and things like that. Uh, during the weigh-ins it's like, okay, you finally mean your opponent face to face and you know, you guys are feeling you guys energy, you know, you gotta be cool because you know, this is part of the job. But at the same time, we both know that we finna go to war with each other. So, even though I know it's very intense with a lot of emotions, but you know we gotta work, we gotta hold it in and lay it out on the uh, the ring, and like it's nervous. Trust me, it's nervous, man. Especially waking up the day of the fight, it's nervous because you got a lot of thinking of the game plan and all that stuff, and then walking into the ring, it's a whole big difference because it's it's game time now. You walking in into your final moment to prove people why you train so hard. So. Also, like speaking of game plan, do you watch film at all? Like I know some boxers do, uh, but I don't know if how, like do you watch any film? Do you have any film of yourself that you know you have to give to other boxers? How does that process work? Oh yeah, I got film, and yes, I watch film myself. My film is on YouTube, and I believe everybody film that I've been watching is on YouTube. So oh, yeah, what I really meant was like I know I, I understand like obviously they'll have the shows live like live broadcasted, but I think of like are you talking about training? Like just anything, like you know, you have an opponent coming up. Do you, are you watching film to you know see what kind of punches he's thrown? Any game plans to work around that? And that's what I was really being like. Oh yes, yes, of course. I'm, I'm of course I'm watching film. I gotta study my opponent. I gotta know him. I gotta know when he make this move. What's gonna happen when he do this? And like, see how many. You know, I just gotta pay attention to him. So the last question I have, and I, you know, I thank you once again for joining me today. Just what are your future goals in the sport of boxing? You know, obviously everyone wants to become a champion, but when it's all said and done, you know, what do you really wish you have accomplished with the sport? Uh, just proving people that you can't judge a, uh, judge a big box cover. That's all I grew up with. People look at me, they don't think that I could do certain stuff until I prove them wrong. And that's my favorite quote. Don't ever judge a big box cover. Hey, Brian, well, I really appreciate you know, your story hopping on today, talking to me today. You have a fight coming up February 15th, like you said, correct? Yes, sir. So I best of luck to that. Make sure everybody watching, tune into that. And uh, you know, best of luck. I'll have your Instagram uh, on the description, too, so people can check out your Instagram and follow your journey. Yeah, you guys follow me, man. I appreciate the love, and you guys are going to know my name real soon. That's great to hear. Great to hear. See you guys.